Hello everyone and welcome to a Cyclic Mod Spotlight. Um, I kind of wanted to start getting some Mod Spotlights, so we are going to have a few, starting with Cyclic. Uh, obviously these zones are under construction, so let's get right into it. In these Mod Spotlights, I'm going to expect that you know how to use JEI and other mods to find the recipes of items like this. So this will kind of be following the Just Enough Items um, progression for the items in Cyclic, but there's also some mixes in between. As you can see, this is a pretty big mod. It adds a lot of things. And uh, yeah, so let's just start off with this Potion of Butterfingers. So you drink this, and whenever you move, there's a chance that you drop whatever you were holding. I believe the chance is increased by um, if you have level 2 on that. But yeah. Alright, the next potion is the Potion of Slow Fall. I actually think we're going to want to kind of leave the building to show this one off. You drink it, and you just kind of slow fall. Or you can hold shift to fall faster. And the next one is water walking. And I think this one also can go with swim speed and, let's see, frost walking. So when you drink this potion, it lets you walk on water. And if you hold shift, you can go into the water. Apparently it also lets you go walk a little bit above the water. Anyway, the next potion is going to be Frostwalker, which, as you'd assume, does just what the uh, Frostwalker enchantment does. Basically turns water into this little thawed ice stuff, and then swim speed kind of does what you'd expect. Makes you swim faster. The potion of snow makes you put snow down on the ground when you walk. The potion of bouncing makes you bounce like you're bouncing on slime blocks. The Potion of Magnetism magnets items to you. Which basically means you... There you go, see like that. It'll just pull items towards you until you pick them up. The Potion of Levitation gives you the levitation effect. The Potion of Haste gives you the haste effect. The Potion of Health Boost 5 gives you extra hearts. Ten extra hearts to be exact. The Potion of Resistance gives you resistance. The Potion of Luck gives you luck. The Potion of Wither withers you. The Potion of Saturation gives you saturation. And the Potion of Blindness gives you blindness. And those are all the potions. So let's start moving into the blocks. The Enchanter works with fluid experience. You put it in an item and it will automatically, using some power, turn it into an enchanted item. The wrench from Cyclic allows you to rotate some blocks. Alright, although not that one, apparently. The magma anvil will, with the use of lava, repair your tools. The powered anvil will use power to repair tools. There's two uh, fluids. There's poison and there is uh, liquid XP. The poison poisons you, obviously. And then you can pick them both up with buckets. There are five carts added by Cyclic. The gold mine cart is a higher max speed and less drag when carrying. The golden furnace mine cart will not lose momentum when fueled. And the turret mine cart will shoot a skeleton arrow when it hits an activator rail. The stone minecart can hold one block and unload it with the activator rail. And finally, the dropper minecart drops an item when it hits an activator rail. There are a few upgrades to the player. There is the inventory upgrade. When you eat this, you add this little button up here that lets you have uh, four, basically doubles your inventory, lets you swap your armor, and it lets you swap your hotbar with one of these four rows. There's also the inventory crafting upgrade which adds this button here, which lets you craft in a 3x3 grid in your inventory. And there is the Lofty Stature Apple. By eating this, you can now walk up a block. Eating it again will remove that effect. The Void Anvil will take off enchants off of items. There are two sets of armor in this mod. There are the Emerald uh, Armor, and there is the uh, Crystallized Obsidian Armor. 
The crystallized obsidian armor is better than diamond, as you can see by the extra hot bars on the bottom. And the emerald armor is the same level as diamond. Scratch that, it's a little bit better than diamond. Uh, the emerald tools are on a similar level to diamond. There is also uh, nether and sandstone variants, and they are, are on iron level about. There is a vision helmet, which will give you night vision and make you glow when wearing it. This can be disabled by right-clicking in the inventory. There are three swords added by this mod other than the emerald. There is the Sword of An Entropy. Plugging shoots a, a weakness potion. There is the Sword of Evasion. Uh, blocking or right-clicking will throw an undercrawl. And we have the Sword of Decay. This will throw a potion of slowness. There's another tool. It is a Matic. It will mine in a 3x3 and works as a shovel or as a pickaxe. The Sack of Holding allows you to pick up a title entity and place it somewhere else. The Storage Bag is just a big bag. can also have the options of auto-picking up or depositing into uh, items. And then there's the Ender Sack, which is just a portable Ender Chest. There are two types of ender orbs. There is the normal ender orb, which just is a reusable ender pearl, and the ender orb translocator, which is the same thing, but you get to write on it. The brush scythe will, when right clicking on a grass or other object, break a lot of weed, a lot of grass, and uh, various flowers. The garden scythe will replant crops when right clicked, and the tree scythe will, when right clicked, harvest a bunch of leaves. There are two exchangers in this, and they will exchange a block, and if left clicked, will increase the range up to 9x9, nine nine, and then there's 9x1 or 1x9 mode, and that's back down to single. The gentle exchange scepter will use only the same blocks to transform. There are various types of uh, dynamite. This one's the combat dynamite. It will not break blocks or hurt players but it will hurt other entities. The mine dynamite drops 100% of blocks broken and does not hurt anything living. Unless you throw it in water, I guess. And then there are six tiers of uh, normal dynamite. They range from tier one to tier six. Dynamite one does one third of a creeper explosion. Diamond, dynamite three does a normal creeper explosion. Dynamite 4 does one-third of a charged creeper explosion, which is equivalent to a TNT. And Dynamite 6 is a charged creeper explosion. Next up we have some carrots from Cyclic. The Lapis Carrot will change what your horse looks like. The Infected Carrot will turn it undead. The Diamond Carrot will add health to your horse. The Ender Carrot will make it jump higher and the redstone carrot will make it faster. The lapis apple will tame an undead horse. There are two kinds of heart containers. The heart container itself, when eaten, will give you extra health. And the empty heart container, when eaten, will make you lose a health. The fire starter, when given flint through any means to put it inside the inventory, will start a fire, a dark fire, or a frost fire. Frost fire will slow and weaken anything that goes through. Dark fire will not hurt players or damage blocks. Another way to summon some dark fire is with the Dusk Flame Hex. You charge it up and you can summon five pieces of fire anywhere you want. By left clicking this item, you can turn it to a double shot or a triple shot. The fire extinguisher We'll put out nearby fires. The slime plates will make you jump up. Or another creature. The soft slime plate will do three blocks. The slime plate will do eight blocks. Which you do take damage from. And the hardened slime block will do 14 blocks. The conveyor belts 
move it variable seeds. The blue one pushes slowest. The purple one pushes faster. The green one push even faster, and the red one push super fast. In order to link a receiver with a transmitter, you place the receiver, left click with the uh, transmitter, and then it works wirelessly. Cyclic adds a couple uh, ores that can be found in the nether end in the end. There is nether gold ore, and all other sorts of vanilla ores in the nether end in the end. These ores include redstone ore, iron ore, gold ore, coal ore, lapis ore, diamond ore, and emerald ore, all found in the nether end in the end. By shift right clicking a remote lever on a lever, it will save the position. Then right clicking in the world will activate or deactivate that lever. The iron spikes, when given a redstone signal, will do damage. The diamond spikes, when given a redstone signal, will give dam will do damage and will drop player-only drops along with experience. The peat farmer, when given power, will harvest peat around it. The saturated peat deposit, when broken, will give you peat and then it can be turned into enriched peat to create more energy in a peat fire generator. When given a GPS marker with the location of an, an object, any power given to the energy transfer node will be transferred to that item. The same thing can happen with a transfer node. Items put, or liquids put in here will be sent to the GPS markers. There are three kinds of scaffolding. The fragile, all three can be placed in the air. The fragile will break after a certain amount of time, just kind of a randomized amount of time. Responsive works the same way, but will not break. And they work as ladders, and with the responsive, when you break one, all of them that are connected will break. And the replaceable scaffolding, when right clicked with another block, when right clicked with another block, will tr trade that block. The item sorter will sort items that come into it into each of these locations. The item extraction cable will extract items and push them through the cables. They will extract items from this white square. Same thing happens with the energy and the fluid extraction cables. An ender library can be connected to as many ender bookshelves, and each ender bookshelf will take four enchanted books placed inside. The target dummy spawner, when right clicked, will summon a target dummy. This will show you how much damage you do when you hit. and will die after 50 health. The soul stone will save you from death one time as long as you are carrying it in your inventory. The water spreader will spread any flowing blocks and turn them into solid blocks of water. The climbing claws, when they are in your inventory, allow you to climb walls. A battery can accept power, and you can also tell it which sides not to accept power from and which it will send to. A rainbow cannon, when used, shoots a random colored beam of light. The player launcher will launch a player. When charged up, it launches you further. The solid ender eye is a reusable ender eye to find strongholds. The rod of elevation will take you up one layer to the next layer up, and the evoker fang. will summon the evoker's magic. The prospector will find ores in a 32 block radius from the block you right click. Three clay. Iron ore under this one. The torch launcher will launch torches. And anytime you pick up a torch, it'll go into that torch launcher. The throwing torch is the same thing, but just one torch. The water froster will turn water into ice. This is not Frostwalker ice, so it can be harvested. The carbon paper will allow you to copy signs. The Ender Book will allow you to add a new 
location and teleport back to it at the cost of experience. This is not in levels, this is in actual experience, so it does not cost very much. And the cave finder will find any caves 32 blocks or less away. Looks like we're all solid under here. The emerald apple will unlock a locked villager trade that has the X over it, or turn a zombie villager into a normal villager. And there we have a villager. Which brings me to the next item, the merchant almanac. This will let you quick trade with any villagers in the area. The spawner seeker will find spawners nearby. Looks like there's no spawners nearby. Oh, maybe there is. For instance, that spawner is the nearest spawner, so it will slowly move its way over there. This is good in strongholds to find the spawner right next to the portal. The engraved thunder also has a left click feature where you can double shot, triple shot, or single shot, and when charged up and right clicked, it will spawn lightning, which turns villagers into witches. The building scepter, when shift right clicked, gives you this inventory. You can fill it with any block and then build from a distance. The stir up will let you ride any animal, but without the ability of moving it around like you would if you had a saddle. And the inverted stirrup lets the animal ride you. The obsidian shears have 10 times the durability of normal shears and will let you shear pumpkins and melons and get the whole melon back. The ender wing will teleport you to world spawn and the ender wing prime will teleport you to your spawn. The piston scepter allows you to push and pull blocks. If you right click you will push. If you left click It'll change it to pull mode, in which case it will pull blocks. And it will allow you, if you left click again, to rotate a block. Although apparently not that one. This allows you to place glitchy torches, I guess. The Chaos Reaper will confuse nearby hostile mobs and they will fight each other. And now they're fighting. The sleeping mat allows you to sleep through the night without setting your spawn, or if right clicked in your inventory, will set your spawn point wherever. The spawn detector will allow you to see what can spawn under the conditions. The enhanced shears, when right clicked, will throw out a set of shears that will shear sheep with a little bit of a benefit to the normal shears. The block randomizer will randomize blocks in an area. This would be good for if you were trying to build a path or something and you just wanted to have a little bit more randomization. Although that didn't really change anything. The rainbow crayon lets you adjust the colors and the words on a sign. The corrupted course route will let you walk through walls for temporary, uh, for temporary time. Seen in the top right corner, four more seconds. Basically puts you in spectator mode from what I see. Oh, and then it blinds and nauseates you. The glowing chorus fruit will give you creative flight for a little while, eating more than one will stack. The monster ball, when thrown at a monster, will pick it up. And when thrown again, will release it. The frostbringer will rapidly shoot ice and snow. The antimatter evaporator will evaporate fluids. This can include lava, generic liquid, or water. The auto torch will automatically torch anything that is dark underneath you, assuming you have torches in your inventory. The wing char will give you slow fall after you fall six blocks. The water charm will protect you from drowning. The sailor charm will increase your in boat speed. The fire charm will protect you from fire. The speed charm will speed you up and your mount and the Void Charm saves you from falling into the Void. Finally, the Air Charm lets you walk on air. If you want to descend, you just hit Sneak. The Slingshot will shoot tiny pebbles. The Item Magnet will pull dropped items near it. The item collector works as a vacuum chest. It will vacuum up any items that are dropped around it and put it in its inventory. The 
see Boomerang, we'll pick up items from a distance and stun enemies. The Interdiction Pulsar will push away mobs in a 30 blo 32 block radius. The Aerial Faith Plate will bounce you up however much you decide it needs to go. Facing any direction you want to go, it's pretty customizable. The Moon Phase Sensor will sense what phase of the moon is and give a certain signal depending on which one it is. The Pharaoh's Beacon will use a potion effect and give it to the player or any non-player or anything or monster or creature or an ambient or a lot of things apparently. And it will give that effect to a whole bunch of um, any creature pretty much. The Dehydrator will dehydrate items and use recipe is using the recipes that dehydrate items. The large button, when right clicked, produces a signal. It is a pressure, pli or pressure plate sized button. And the doorbell makes kind of more of an elevator sound, but it also does redstone. The bullseye target, the closer you get to that yellow section, the higher the redstone signal it'll give off. The magic beans, when planted, will harvest, will grow random junk. This can be anything from diamonds to this can be anything from diamonds to emeralds to just some random clay or glass blocks. The redstone clock will activate on whatever clock setting you want to. The apple sprouts can be placed under any block that is known as leaves in the ore dictionary, and it will grow an apple every. It'll and it'll grow an apple every once in a while, and you can harvest that. And every once in a while, you get a golden apple. The golden apple chances are very rare. A sprinkler will be placed on water and will uh, sprinkle water on the crops and it will make them go faster. An empty beacon, when given a redstone signal, will give off a beacon, a beacon beam. The unchant pylon will unenchant any items. The experience pylon will take any XP from your player and it can either collect orbs or spray orbs. Redstone signal is always an option, and you can give as much experience to yourself or put it into the experience pylon. Soundproofing makes sounds quieter within a six block range. A digital typewriter lets you write anything on, and it will type it there. You have text alignment, and you have color options too. Each, a trash void will take any fluids or items that are pumped into it by a hopper or a pipe and delete them. An entity detector will detect entities within a certain range. A fan will push I, will push uh, will push entities within a 16 block range. The shearing block will shear any sheep that bump up against it. A fluid storage tank will be able to hold 64 buckets of any item, any fluid you want. The password trigger allows you to set any password and claim yourself as the owner. And then you are able to make that password required to give a redstone signal. The automatic fishing net can be placed on water and will automatically fish using a fishing rod. The SFX block will accept any sound from any mod that is in the pack. For instance, let's go with uh, this actually edition stun done done one. And when given a redstone signal, maybe we're this padding. Anyway, we give it a redstone signal. And his name is John C. It will play that sound from whichever sound you want. The dice block will, when placed, give you a random number, and when right clicked, it'll randomize a number for you. The laser cell also uses these markers and will set some lasers in a spot that are harmless. The lasers are harmless. 
the imbue station when shift right clicked will give you all the options that you have to basically enchant your bow. If you put your bow in there, and you feel like a blaze powder, it'll give you a fire, and it'll give you all these effects depending on what you put in it. The precise dropper will drop a block exactly one block in front of it. Or it can be launched, it can be delayed, it can be offset and thrown a lot further, and you can throw as many of a uh, block up to a stack as you want. The fluid placer does the same thing. The water candle, when it is ignited, will increase monster spawns nearby. This is of course a Terraria reference, as there is a water ca candle in the dungeons of Terraria, and that increases the most spawning around it. This will package an item in a 3x3 block, or you can actually change it with Craft Tweaker, so maybe see what your mod, dev, your mod pack dev has changed this, if at all. And the Auto Crafter will automatically craft one recipe, input and output here. The Harvester will harvest an area, either in one block by one block mode, that is, the, that is slower, but it is more power efficient, or the whole area. You can go up to 15 by 15 any odd in interval. The Hydrator will, when put concrete in here, water in here, and power in here, will give you the concre concrete from Concrete Powder. The Block Placer places block in front of it. The Uncrafting Grid, when given power, well, maybe not. We'll uncraft an item. The controlling miner will control, will be able to break in a certain area, depending on what you set it to. Bigger areas require more power. The automated user will either right or left click in an area, and you can give it a delay, and it will use an item and give an item depending on how that item is used. The workbench will keep its inventory when you look out of the crafting grid. And finally, the forester is a tree farm. You put saplings in, and you get out uh, wooden blocks. So I believe that's it for cyclic. If I missed anything, go ahead and tell me in the comments below. I will uh, put the pinned comment as some of the stuff I missed, and the description also will have some stuff. But uh, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button. It kind of took some time to get all this set up, so that's really helpful. And uh, it'll make me decide if I want to do some more uh, Mod Spotlights in the future. So thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button for more of this. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.